Cozen for Canada. In comes Cozen. And now Canada can win it if Jake Allen can make the stop on Jordan Schrader. You're part of that California invasion. Do you, do you look back to Wayne Gretzky and his arrival in the late 80s and the impact it had on you and your family in the early 90s in Los Angeles growing up there? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think if you look at hockey as a whole in California during that time, you know, it wasn't that big at first, but when he got there, it seemed to spark something. You saw all the celebrities going to the games and just every day more and more people were interested in the game. And that's what happens when you get a guy a guy like him comes to a big market like that and it seemed to spark something there and, and nowadays you see more and more guys are coming out of California every day and it's, it's pretty crazy how that affected it. It's fun that it's, it's booming and it's getting bigger and bigger and I think there's going to be even more guys coming out of LA and California. Growing up here for most of us we get to put up with some cold weather, the occasional snowstorm. Give me your best earthquake story. My best earthquake story, actually when the, there was that big earthquake, I think it was in the 93 or 94. During the World Series, that one? No, that one, that oh, was the world. Northern Cal. Yeah. I was actually at Wayne Gretzky's house. Um, when I was younger, I was, I was friends with Ty, and I was actually at Wayne's house when that, that earthquake happened, so it's a pretty cool story, I guess. That is a cool story. <laughs> Your ability to skate, it seems you've, you've had it from the get-go. We watch Barb. Uh, Underhill taking a bunch of you guys through your paces. What made skating so easy for you? And do you recall back when, when you were put on the ice and how you were able to skate so well so quickly? Well, I think I'm, I'm a little bull-legged naturally. And I think that actually kind of helps me. Um, when I was younger, I started skating when I was two. So I got a pretty early start at it. And I remember I started on rollerblades in California. I mean, it's pretty nice out a lot of the time. So. My, my parents started me on rollerblades, did that, and then when I was about two, two and a half, I started taking skating lessons. And I still remember my parents telling me that the skating coach I had said, don't change a stride. It's, you don't want to mess with it. And I've skated since that my entire life, and it's, it's been a strong point for me. It's something I need to be good at. Um, as a smaller guy, it kind of helps me navigate around the ice. Tell us about uh, being the international man of mystery, Canadian. American born, how that all worked out? Well, my, my dad's American, my mom's Canadian. I was born in Los Angeles, then I moved to Calgary when I was about 10. Lived there for, I mean, I'm still there. I, I go back in the summers and, you know, it's, it's kind of the best of both worlds, to be honest. I'm, I'm a proud American, I'm a proud Canadian. I've been born American, I've been raised Canadian. It's, it's kind of, it, it's interesting. It's, I have two passports, makes things very easy, and uh, makes, makes I can live in both places, work in both places. It's kind of a huge blessing in disguise. Any regrets looking back to 2010 and playing for Canada as opposed to the United States? I'm not sure whether Jerry D'Amigo might remind you of it, but uh, boy, oh boy, that was, that was a close call. No, I don't. Um, like I said then, it was, I, I feel like I developed a lot as a hockey player in Canada. I feel like my at, at the age of 10, that was kind of a big age for me and in my development. Mm -hmm. There's a lot I did in, in the States too. Uh, you know, there's, it was a decision where I felt that maybe I was raised a bit more Canadian with my, my mom kind of ran the house, so she kind of raised me a bit more Canadian, but it was, at, at the time it was a decision that I thought was the right one. And I have no regrets.